Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today's video, it's a bit of a do-over if I'm honest. <laughs> if you missed it roughly two weeks ago now, I decided to bust out my old Haswell Core i7 test system, install a GTX 1080 Ti in it, as you do, and see how it compares to the new 8th generation Core i7 8700K in today's games. Plenty of benchmarking did go into that one, but you guys seem to really enjoy the comparison. The only criticism though being that while I did overclock the older 4770K, I didn't overclock the new 8700K. Since we were already GPU bound with the GTX 1080 Ti, and the few examples that I gave, I knew that for the most part, overclocking the 8700K wouldn't really change much. Still, quite a few passionate viewers demanded that I go back and retest with the 8700K overclocked, so that's what we've done. I've also added some 1440p results as well, and this is something that many of you also requested. For this test, we have a number of CPU configurations tested at 1080p using sort of medium mid-range quality settings to ultra, which is maximum, uh, the ultra preset, as well as 1440p again using the ultra or maximum quality preset. The 4770K numbers have been updated with better DDR3 memory. It's still 2400 stuff, but the timings are a bit tighter, and in some of the tests this has really helped. I'm now testing with G-Skill Sniper Series 16GB DDR3 2400CL11 memory, and I've also increased the overclock frequency by 200MHz to 4.8GHz for all the tests. For a direct comparison, I've also clocked the 8700K at 4.8 GHz. My chip does have no issue at 5 GHz, but as I said, I really wanted to do a clock for clock comparison here, so I did clock it at 4.8 GHz, and this is probably a more realistic overclock anyway. It seems like most people with an 8700K are achieving around 4.8 GHz. The big reason for this update has been to pave the way for my Core i7 2600K testing, which I will be adding soon. So that should be interesting. For now though, let's check out the updated results. Like all good benchmark sessions, we're going to be kicking things off with Ashes of the Benchmark. Very few gamers may actually play this game, but that doesn't change the fact that from a technical standpoint, it's a marvel and it puts most other games to shame. It's also a perfect example for showing the relationship between the CPU and GPU and how quality settings impact that. The high quality preset, which can be considered more of a medium type setting, relaxes the demand on the GPU and therefore the CPU can stretch its legs a bit more. Even so, overclocking the 8700K doesn't provide that much more in the way of extra performance. So despite using the high quality preset, we're still able to find the limits of the GTX 1080 Ti. Clocked at 4.8 GHz, the 4770K was good for 107 FPS on average, and that meant overclocked 3700K was 30% faster, and that's a seriously big margin right there. However, jumping to the crazy preset, which applies the maximum in-game visuals, we run into a serious GPU bottleneck for most of the test configurations. The only exceptions here include the 4-threaded 7600K and the lower-clocked stock 4770K. Comparing the overclocked configurations, the 8700K is now just 4% faster for the average frame rate. Moving to 1440p though sees the playing field completely neutralized and now there is no distinguishing between the overclocked 4770K and the 8700K. And remember we are still using the GTX 1080 Ti for this test. So in Ashes of the Singularity the 8700K was up to 30% faster but under realistic conditions that see gamers pretty much GPU bound there's likely to be little to no difference in this title. Next up we have Assassin's Creed Origins and here are the 1080p medium quality preset results. Not much in it really I have to say and quite shockingly overclocking the 8700K didn't boost performance and as a result it was just 10% faster than the 4770K in this title. The margin is reduced to 7% using the ultra high quality preset so not a big margin but the 8700K was able to provide a few extra frames all the same. However, now at 1440p, the 8700K was just 2 FPS faster on average. It did remain 9% faster for the 1% low result, but still not a great deal in it, even with a GTX 1080 Ti. Moving on, we have the Dawn of War 3 results, and here overclocking boosted the 8700K's performance by 7% at 1080p using the medium quality preset. This meant here it was 13% faster than the 4770K, so again, not a huge margin by any stretch of the imagination. Interestingly though, increasing the quality settings, we see that the 8700K was able to extend its lead to 17%. Now this is as strange as I don't believe there are any settings here that relate to the CPU in any way. Even so, the jump to 1440p saw the overclock CPUs deliver virtually the same average frame rate, while the 8700K was 8% faster when comparing the minimums. 
Now for some deus ex mankind divider results and here the 8700K was 17% fast and the 4770K with both CPUs overclocked. For this test we're using the high quality preset at 1080p and once again the GTX 1080 Ti is handling the rendering work. Jumping up to the ultra quality preset reduced the 17% deficit seen previously to, well, nothing at all really, 1 FPS, so within the margin of error. It's also worth noting that whereas overclocking the 4770K boosted the performance by 15% previously, doing so now improved performance by just 7%. Then finally, at 1440p, we run into a severe GPU bottleneck, and now all configurations spat out the same 66 FPS minimum and 74 FPS average. Obviously, overclocking either the 4770K or 8700K is of no benefit here, with the GTX 1080 Ti so heavily nailed down. Moving on, we have some Dirt 4 results, and for those of you rocking a 144Hz display, the CPU probably won't matter that much in this title. Even stock, the 4770K, which was the slowest CPU tested, allowed for more than 160 FPS to be rendered at all times using the medium quality preset at 1080p. Overclocked, it averaged 234 frames per second, and this meant the 8700K was 21% faster with an incredible 284 frames per second. However, with the ultra quality preset applied, that margin shrunk dramatically, and now the overclocked 8700K is just 5% faster for the average frame rate, and slightly less when looking at the 1% low result. Then, as you might have expected, at 1440p using the ultra quality preset, we see the same 124 FPS on average from both the 8700K and 4770K. Again, under these conditions, overclocking the 8700K didn't provide any additional performance. Moving on, we have another racing simulator, this time F1 2017, and first up we have the 1080p medium quality results. Here the overclocked 8700K was 18% faster than the overclocked 4770K, that's a pretty big margin, but of course all the CPUs allowed the GTX 1080 Ti to render well over 100 FPS at all times. Jumping up to the ultra high quality settings reduced the margin very heavily, it has to be said. Now the 8700K was just 5% faster than the 4770K when comparing the average frame rate. Then once again, the margin was completely eliminated at 1440p as even the 1080 Ti imposes a strong GPU bottleneck that limits performance across all CPUs tested. The last racing simulator that I've tested with is Project Cars 2, and here the overclocked 8700K was 15% faster than the 4770K. Once again, we are starting off our testing with the medium quality settings at 1080p, which sees a far less GPU limited scenario than the ultra preset that we're about to look at. That said though, we do see a rare situation where the margin grows when increasing the quality settings, and now the 8700K is 17% faster than the 4770K. Overall, the performance trends are much the same, but still it's surprising to see that we're not running into a GPU-bound situation. Uh, not yet anyway. Using the same ultra quality settings, but now at the 1440p resolution, the 8700K is just 7% faster, and even overclocked, the 4770K can't match the stock 7th and 8th generation core CPUs. I assume memory bandwidth for the fourth generation Core i7 processor is the issue here. Here we have yet another title where the overclocked 8700K is 18% faster when using the medium quality settings at 1080p, whereas the 4770K managed 228 FPS on average in Rainbow Six Siege, the 8700K was good for 269 frames per second. Interestingly though, this is yet another title where even at 4.8 GHz, the 4770K struggles to keep pace with the stock 7th generation core processors. Unlike what we saw with Project Cars 2 though, increasing the quality preset heavily reduces the margin, though it has to be said this has been the case with pretty much every other game tested. Whereas the overclocked 8700K was 18% faster than the 4770K previously, it's just 9% faster with the increased quality settings. We're also seeing a situation here where the 8700K was maxing out the 1080 Ti in its stock out of the box configuration using these quality settings. Finally, at 1440p, the 8700K was just 4% faster on average, though it was still 7% faster when comparing the 1% low result. That said though, while the 8700K was faster, the margin was very slim, and with well over 100 FPS at all times, the overclocked 4770K certainly delivered a similar experience. 
The final game I've tested with is Warhammer 2, and here we find what almost looks like a frame cap. Overclocked to the 8700K and 4770K allowed for the same average frame rate of around 190 FPS when using the medium quality preset. However, if we look at the 1% low result, the 8770K is 11% faster. That said, the 4770K did maintain at least 143 FPS. Using the ultra quality preset while remaining at 1080p reveals a severe GPU bottleneck and now the 4770K and 8700K deliver the exact same performance. So naturally I expect to see the same thing at 1440p and that is indeed the case. 77 FPS on average with a 64 FPS minimum across the board. All right, so what we've seen so far is pretty similar to the original video published a few weeks ago, though the addition of the 1440p testing really gives us a clear look at the GPU limited scenarios, let's say. Before wrapping things up, let's have a look at the results across the 11 games tested. Across all 11 games tested, the 8700K was on average 18% faster once overclocked when compared to the 4770K. If you left both CPUs at their stock out of the box clock speeds, the 8700K would be 25% faster on average. And that is of course due to the fact that it is clocked up to 21% higher. Still, even with the medium type quality settings, which alleviates the GPU bottleneck for the most part, would you really notice the difference between 128 FPS and 152 FPS? And again, those are the 1% low figures for each of the CPUs tested when overclocked. So not the average frame rate, the 1% low figure. Of course, I am testing with the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, and I feel that most gamers using such a powerful graphics card would opt for much higher visual quality settings. Therefore, with the ultra quality settings enabled, the 8700K overclocked was just 11% faster and 18% faster with both CPUs stock. So not a huge margin there if I'm honest, and the 4770K's 1% low result of 98 FPS is very respectable. Then finally, at 1440p, the overclocked 8700K was just 4% faster on average, though when looking at the 1% low result it was 9% faster. So Unsurprisingly, the 8700K is the faster CPU of the two, but when it comes to realistic gaming conditions, it's really not that much faster. So, as I said in my previous video, I don't think the upgrade from either the 4770K or the 4790K to the 8700K is going to be worth it. For the most part, gamers won't even notice the difference. Uh, also, please note that both the 4770K and 4790K overclocked to 4.8 GHz will deliver the exact same performance. They are based on the same architecture after all. Although decent gains were seen at times, remember we are using a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti here, you do have to be playing at 1080p and you can't be upscaling or making heavy use of anti-aliasing for example. Meanwhile if you are spending $700 US on a graphics card, buying a new CPU or motherboard and memory combo isn't something you're really going to think twice about anyway. Also, as I did say previously, you're almost always GPU limited with a Core i7 processor, even a four year old one. The updated 1440p results prove this, and again, I was using a GTX 1080 Ti. Those using a standard 1080 will see an even smaller margin, while those with a 1070 or perhaps even something slower uh, will see the margin completely eliminated altogether. All that said though, I am glad I took the time to update the Haswell results at the 4.8 GHz overclock uh, with the new memory that I got my hands on and just those extra test conditions in the 1440p testing. The next step now though would be to include an unlocked Sandy Bridge processor, so a second generation core processor, Core i7 processor that is, to see how that stacks up. It'll be very interesting indeed. I am about 20% of the way into that testing uh, with the 2600K, though I haven't even started the overclocking part. And my Z68 motherboard just refuses to boot now. It was working fine one day, shut it down, got up the next day to continue on, push the power button, nothing. I've tried a few different things, power supplies and all that, and the board refuses to do anything. So dead board, I will have to get a new Z68 board or a new Z77 board. They're quite hard to track down at a reasonable price, but that's my mission for the rest of the week. So until I can do that, the Sandy Bridge version will be slightly delayed, but hopefully in the next week or two I can get that on the channel. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. That's very helpful. Leave some comments below. Also love to hear from you guys. And yeah, I'll see you again next time. Or soon. Yeah, I'll see you again soon. Which will be next time. Which will be soon, because I'll have another video. Hmm.